welcome uh, when we talk of the natural gas purification or natural gas separation we have to take out the various types of impurities present and water is one of the main impurities in natural gas and for that we need to know the water content in the natural gas so that we can design how to dehydrate the water so today's lecture will be concerning about the estimation of water content in natural gas in this what we shall learn that what is the significance of water content in natural gas how to specify the water content then what are the factors which affect the water content and lastly what are the various estimated methods to uh, for the water content here we will be talking about only a few representative methods because there are exhaustive methods depending on the various types of natural gases so first let us see the significance of water content in natural gas water in natural gas it has some um, bad effects that first it degrades the fuel value of the natural gas that is the natural gas with lots of water will be having less calorific value so we shall not be able to derive much thermal energy by burning this kind of natural gas with high amount of water then water also dictates the formation of some acid because when in natural gas generally we have carbon dioxide and hydrogen sulfide which may react with water and form uh, weak acids which may corrode the pipelines and the equipment and water also forms hydrates with some of the gases like carbon dioxide methane ethane etc it can form hydrates and these hydrates as we know that they are solid particles and they may get deposited inside the pipelines or in the um, equipment and heat exchangers so that they will either produce some lot generate pressure drop by they will impede the flow of the gas or they can make scales on the heat exchange surfaces so that the heat transfer efficiency will also get reduced and th that's how we will find that it will affect the dehydration system so that is why we have to understand the uh, water content in the natural gas now there are various ways of specifying the uh, water content first is the in terms of mass of water per unit volume of the gas and this is given generally in terms of milligram per standard meter cube or pounds per million uh, standard cubic feet and this is generally used for gases another way is pounds per million by volume it is also used for gases and then we have parts per million uh, by mass ppmw that is for liquids and both ppmv and ppmw require molecular weight of hydrocarbon molecules for conversion to the other units and then lastly we have the dew point temperature because de when depending on the amount of water in any gas the gas will be having different dew points so dew, dew point is an indication of the water content and this is used for both gases and liquids and generally there is no simple method to convert the dew point temperature that is dpt into ppmv or ppmw so now we shall see that how to uh, do some kind of basic conversion among these particular um, representations now first we see that how we can convert ppmv to milligram per meter cube now one ppmv is defined like 10 to the power minus 6 kilomole of species i to kilomole of gas mixture that is how much one ppmv means one part per million and million represents 10 to the power 6 so one kilomole of species i in 10 to the power 6 kilomole of the gaseous mixture and that is how we are getting 10 to the power minus 6 in the numerator and then to convert the kilomole into the mass what we do we multiply with with the molecular weight so we now get mi in milligram species of the of i that is milligram means kg into 10 to the power minus 6 gives us 1 milligram so milligram of species i per kilomole of the gas mixture and then we use for ideal gas flow if we can use 
we find that by using ideal gas we can write v equal to n r t by p and in this we are putting everything in terms of the SI units. So, these are the, if we put all these units temperature in Kelvin, pressure in kilopascal and uh, universal gas constant in kilojoule per kilomole per Kelvin, then we get that 1 ppmv is equal to this particular thing molecular weight into pressure divided by r into t and this is the milligram species per cubic meter of the gas mixture. So, that is how we can convert ppmv to milligram per meter cube. Next we come to ppmw to milligram per meter cube. In this first we see that if you are using liquid then we have this um, 10 to the power minus 6 kilogram of species I per kg of liquid mixture because for liquids we are talking in terms of mass not in terms of mole. So, we have then what we do that we if we divide by the average density then what we find that we are getting milligram of the species I per cubic meter of the liquid mixture and in this case the uh, density is given in terms of kg per meter cube. This ppmw may also be used for gas. In that case, we, if we put this kgs, then what we do that we, it is very simple that we are simply having the uh, molecular weight to convert this gas mixture into kilo mole and we get by the ideal gas law, we put pm by rt to get milligram species per meter cube of the gas mixture. So, this is how we are doing this interconvergence of the various units. Then the various factors which affect the water content in the natural gas are like this that uh, when we uh, the water content will drop with an increase in the molecular weight and in increase in the salinity that is the presence of the salts and it can de decrease also with a decrease in the temperature, decrease in the pressure and a decrease in the amount of the liquefied acid gases which significantly reduce the solubility of water in natural gas. Now, here we have the various charts and analytical models to estimate the water content in natural gas. First, let us look into the charts. Now, we have various types of charts in the literature because there are so many varieties of natural gas and people are still working all over the world to get generate such kinds of charts for different types of natural gas. Here we have just taken named a few of them. So, first let us see that the charts are used for they are because they are simple and easy to estimate the water content than an analytical methods because we do not need to solve any equation. We have chart and we can read out the values. On the other hand they have some uh, drawbacks that we cannot have uh, um, one particular chart which will represent all sorts of natural gases and also it is very difficult to interpolate the chart charts and these charts are not much useful when we talk of any kind of theoretical analysis through coding and modeling. So, these are some drawbacks, but for quick estimation we can use these charts and here we I have given a few of the charts which are available in the literature and one of them the popular one is the maketa wave pressure temperature correlation chart I we shall be talking about only this particular chart. So, let us see how this particular chart looks like that it is a one of the most popular of the charts it can estimate the water content for uh, for methane content as low as 0 0.70 mole fraction. So, for this small amount of mole fraction also it can uh, give the water content and gas gravity is not used to in the presence of the H2S and CO2 and other hydrocarbons. And in this chart we shall see that there is a hydrate line which tells us that whether there will be hydrate formation or not due to the water. So, this um, graph is just indicative it should not be used to know the exactly the hydrate content. It can just tell us the demarcation that or the point below which the hydrate will be formed and this uh, composition dependency of on the of the water content cannot be ascertained from this kind of a chart. So, here is a typical chart of this proposed by Maketa and Wehe. We find that on the y axis we have the water content, on the x axis we have temperatures and all these lines represent the various pressures and here we have some correction factors for the salinity, for the gas relative density and here we find that by the red line it is the position where the hydrate may be formed. So, it is just a qualitative indication that 
uh, above which there could be hydrate formation, but it should not be used to find out the amount of hydrate in the natural gas. After this, uh, we come to some analytical techniques and these analytical models have the advantage that they are quite accurate and they are quick, they are very convenient and easy to program. On the other hand, they are not robust in the sense that they are not universally applicable. There are various analytical models uh, already reported and are being developed and these are not available for all type of natural gases because different depending on the type of natural gas, uh, the source of natural gas, the compositions will change. So, we may not be able to use one particular model for all kinds of natural gases. Then we, they are not unique even for any given natural gas. Despite them, they are finding quite amount of uh, applications and again we have different types of models. Oh, there are two uh, broad classifications, one are simplified thermodynamic models and some are empirical or semi-empirical correlations. So, first let us see again thermodynamic model, they are quite accurate and they are applicable to all kinds of phase combinations like liquid vapor, hydrate vapor, ice vapor and liquid hydrate vapor region. There is a uh, possibility of ice formation in natural gas depending on the temperature and pressure due to the water content. But these thermodynamic models are difficult to solve. So, here we put one of the models in which the basis is this at the vapor liquid equilibrium, the fugacity of a component is same in both the vapor and the liquid phases. So, with this, this is a thermodynamic um, uh, condition. So, when we are equating the fugacities of a component in both the liquid and the vapor phases, we get this kind of an equation and then we find that these are the various parameters that is the this W is the water, this, this is the uh, vapor pressure of water and this is given by this particular equation and we see that this changes with the temperature. Then we have the fugacity of water and we have this partial volume of water in the liquid. So, this is given by this expression and in this need we need the density of water which is given by this and in this we have an, another parameter dw, this is given in terms of some delta vw which is given by this particular expression and we find that this is a function of the temperature and then we have the rho w that is a function of pressure and this b and c are some temperature dependent functions. So, ultimately what we find this vw is a function of both temperature and pressure and here we have temperature T and pressure P. So, here the various uh, notations are there that dW is some formation volume factor and delta vW is the change in the volume due to temperature. So, by using if we know these all these parameter values then we can find out the mole fraction of water in the natural gas. Now, if there is a ice formation in that case we have this water in the ice. So, this is given by this particular expression and uh, is a function of the temperature and here we find the vapor pressure of the ice is given by this expression and in this expression there is a parameter A which is given in terms of temperature. So, what we what we see that in this way we are able to estimate the amount of water both in the ice phase if it is formed and also in the vapor phase. So, these expressions may be used, uh, please understand that these expressions need not be memorized. You can refer to the uh, various uh, references given in this lecture to look into these expressions and find out the various values. Now, we go to some empirical or semi-empirical correlations. In this first we see that these, em, these empirical or semi-empirical relations are obtained by regression of the experimental data. They are quite simple and very convenient and very accurate within the specified conditions uh, because outside the specified conditions they may not be giving good results because they have the regression is valid only within some specified range, but they are less accurate in presence of heavy hydrocarbons. So, but still they are quite popular. Now, in this we have now some analytical methods for um, 
um, this. So we find first for the sweet natural gas. Sweet natural gas means we have uh, almost no sulfur content in it. So again for the sweet natural gas, there are some expressions which have been obtained by regressing the chart data. The chart data we have shown already Maketa Vehe is one of them and then we have some experimental data. So let us see that uh, what kind of chart data like Ning et al proposed one correlation. They use the Maketa Vehe chart and th this is a reference from which we, this has been taken and in this we find that the water content is given by this particular expression which is a function of temperature and this d factor is there which is uh, given by this uh, this expression. And here we have one s, this s is the mole fraction of the brine in water that means this particular expression is able to also make the correction for the salinity and d is uh, taking care of the specific gravity. Now there are various correlations are there this A0, A1, A2, etc. and these uh, uh, parameters may be obtained from this particular table. So for various pressures these have been listed out here. So the pressure is from 0.1 MPa to 100 MPa that is about 1 bar to 1000 bar. So from this uh, table we can um, get these values of the various parameters and then we can estimate the water content in sweet natural gas and this correlation is valid for this 1 bar to 1000 bar. Now we come to another type of um, expression which have been obtained from the experimental data. Here we have an um, method given by Zhu et al and we find that this is applicable within this temperature range and within this pressure range. And here is the expression for the water content in the sweet natural gas. And if you go into the literature and on this in this papers, you will find the validity of these particular correlations and their mutual comparisons also. So here we find again we have many uh, parameters A j and B j which may be obtained from this particular table given by the authors. So using these A and B values, we can get the water content in sweet natural gas and this is the reference. Now there is another uh, method Bukasek, this is also quite popular method and here we have this in this method we have these various uh, expressions and here we are generally not using any kind of parameters, they are coming basically from the reduced temperature with respect to the critical uh, temperature of water. So this tau is defined as 1 minus TRW that is a reduced temperature uh, with respect to the critical temperature of water and we are using the only the critical temperature of uh, temperature pressure of water and water. So this is again the range of validity for temperature pressure for this Bukasek method. Now after learning about the uh, sweet natural gas, we go to the sour natural gas, we have to see that what kind, how these things are again um, modified. So first we have again I have given only a few popular uh, methods, first is the Maddox component contribution method. In this method we have, we, it is assumed that the water content in the sour natural gas as the, the total contribution due to the presence of the H2S and the CO2 the acid gases are present. And then what we do that the water content is given by this expression in this HC represents the hydrocarbons and we have the CO2 and the H2S. And in this the WH2O uh, this the water content is given in terms of the milligram per standard meter cube, a pressure is given in terms of the mega Pascal and temperature in given terms of the Kelvin. Whenever you are using any kind of correlation, you have to understand that you have to stick to the kind of units the correlation has been developed with. So and this is the uh, for the non-hydrocarbon um, thing that this is the expression which is given in terms of the pressure. And from this table, we can get the values of these various parameters which are there in the particular. 
correlation A0 A1 A2 for both carbon dioxide and uh, H2S for various types of temperatures. Now, after this method, we have another method uh, which is the Robinson's H2S model because why this H2S model is called because in this case the total carbon dioxide and H2S are given in terms of H2S. Okay. So, and Robinson said that the saturated water content of CO2 is about 0.75 times of the content of the H2S under the same condition with this what it is the equivalent H2S mole fraction he proposed as the actual H2S mole fraction plus 0.75 of YCO2. And then he took the Wickert proposed this kind of an expression, uh, Wickert is another chart has proposed in this, the sour natural gas content is given by the sweet natural gas content multiplied by some factor F and this F depends on the temperature, pressure and the equivalent H2S mole fraction. Now, with this, this Mohammadi uh, uh, gave this expression for the F in terms of the equivalent H2S mole fraction and the some temperature pressure and P0, P0 are the reference temperatures given by this value 273 K that is about 0 degree centigrade and reference pressure is 0 0.01 mega Pascal that is about 0.1 bar. And this is applicable for this temperature and this pressure ranges and this use the Makata Behe chart or the modified ideal model. Now, lastly we have uh, these particular correlations are uh, there that which are affected by the gas and they are based on some calculation of the water hydrocarbon acid gas system and they do not require the estimation of water content in sweet natural gas in advance. So, this is um, uh, another one in this we have another correlation in this uh, in this kind of correlation we do not need to know the sweet natural gas water content as was required in case of Maddox and in Robinson. Here we go to Wang method and in this we find that this is the type of correlations which is given in terms of the solid content, the uh, CO2 content and we have also H2O here and that means we have to have a iterative solution and here we have the expression for the uh, PW set in terms of the critical pressure and this is the function FTR which is there in this and this is given in terms of the reduced temperature and this critical temperature and pressure of water are given like this. So, with this we can use this particular expression to find out the sour uh, the water content in the sour natural gas. And these are range of applicability and whatever um, expressions with this in this A, B and C are there. So, these are given by this um, these values and if T is less than T C we have one set of A B C and if it is more than T C then we have another set of A B C and this uh, this particular reference is there which gives this particular expression. Now, after this we find that we have uh, taken all the um, relationships which are necessary to know the water content for the sweet and sour natural gas. So, we have broadly looked into the two methods one is based on the chart and another based on some analytical models and these are the references from which you can consult for further detail. Thank you.